Hello, I have leveled up and purchased a green screen. The last time I tried to use it, it looked absolutely horrible and there was green all around my head. So hopefully it's not doing that now. It probably is because I didn't look into how to fix it and I just assumed it would work next time. So we'll see. Anyway, so I wanted to talk about Tailwind today. Uh, Tailwind CSS for any of you guys who don't know, which I assume is not a whole lot of you, is a utility first uh, CSS framework for stupid people like me. Essentially what that means is just instead of having to like write classes like this, I'm pointing using my green screen. Hopefully I'm actually still using this and it's not stupid. But yeah, so instead of writing like your classes like this and then applying them into your class names, like in the actual element like this, you're instead just going to have like all of these really small elements. So like P dash whatever for padding or M dash whatever for margin. Um, it's also not like something like bootstrap where you'll have like BTN and that encompasses a whole bunch of different classes. Each of these individual class names are just like the atomic units of the CSS itself. So essentially you're just writing your CSS directly in your markup. Now, today's video is not how to write specifically Tailwind CSS. Like if you want to learn how to write Tailwind CSS, I suggest you just download this extension right here for Tailwind in VS Code. If you're using VS Code, I'm sure there's similar ones for other uh, text editors, but just download an extension and start trying. So like if you wanted to add padding, just write P as a class name, you'll get autocomplete and if you know CSS, you know Tailwind CSS pretty, pretty quick. AKA, please do not go buy a Tailwind CSS course. You absolutely do not need to pay. You can just, you you know Tailwind CSS. If you know CSS, you know Tailwind CSS. Anyway, so more specifically why I wanted to make this video, um, other people have made similar videos, but I just wanted to talk about why I like Tailwind CSS and why I think so many people like Tailwind CSS because for somebody who comes from normal CSS, seeing something like this, where you have like a bajillion class names um, on, in your markup, you, you probably see that and you're like, wow, that's super ugly. I absolutely hate that. Why would anyone like that? And it is super ugly when you first see it. And it's like really hard to get used to, but once you actually get comfortable using it, it's, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's like my favorite new technology from the last handful of years. So yeah, I just want to talk about why I like it and why so many people like it and hopefully can convince you uh, to also jump on board if you're one of those people who absolutely hates it and drops in my comments saying that they hate it. And also just add a couple of tips and some things that you might want to try if you're new to Tailwind CSS, which you might not see immediately if you're just just getting into it. Um, and a couple of little things that you can use to help make your experience writing Tailwind better. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go down to the corner now. Goodbye. Okay, so we're looking at code now. You're welcome. By the way, the code for this, if you want it, is free and that's in my description. Anyways, so I know, again, that this looks rough when you see it if you're coming from normal CSS. Like this specific component has like a bajillion class names on it. If I scroll down, you'll see that more of these have a bajillion class names on it. And that seems a little bit unruly, like a little bit hard to handle whenever you're first getting used to it. Like even this, like this isn't a massive amount of class names. Some of these other ones are, are pretty long, but this is pretty common to see, you know, this many class names, if not more uh, on one of your elements. But counterintuitively, kind of the good thing about this is that you don't have to write any CSS. And that sounds a little bit weird until I explain it a little bit further, but by design, like kind of this ugliness is in part by design. Let's actually look a little bit further into what I'm talking about. So first of all, you're gonna get like sensible presets for just about everything with this. Don't get me wrong, you could do this with normal CSS too, but this is one of the really nice things, uh, at least for me, is like different amounts of padding and stuff. So like if I remove my padding here, I do like P dash whatever. Uh, this is also skipping past a little bit, but I have this next on my list of stuff to talk about. So we're gonna talk about this really quick. Um, but like P dash whatever, um, and all of this is already scaled. You can kind of write this up, but just these little design presets that are gonna come with just the base CSS really makes a big difference. So you're not trying to go through in your normal CSS and you have, you know, say, go down, maybe I'll bump this up a little bit, by the way. And maybe you have like your, you know, BTN component, and then you're like, okay, we'll do padding here of, you know, two rem, but then somebody else makes a makes a button later that's, you know, BTN, Jesus Christ, that's BTN two, and it has padding of 2.2 rem or whatever. And you're just gonna get these weird inconsistencies throughout your website where stuff isn't kind of scaled correctly. And you can just kind of see it when you don't have some kind of zip or some kind of system for spacing. So just, just at kind of a high level, that's one of the really nice things about not having to write your own CSS is all of these defaults are already decided for you. Second of all, you're always going to ship kind of the least amount of CSS possible. So I'm sure many of you guys, especially if you've worked on the team before, are used to having huge CSS files and you know, you have some button or something. So it's like, you know, BTN, blah, blah, blah. And this is, you know, something that you've written, but it's in the CSS file among a hundred CSS files. And each of those have all of their, this different code. And someone comes in and they have, they're using this somewhere. So it's, you know, button and then class name. And then you've actually used your, your thing, right? And then maybe 
you know, a year later, someone comes in and they're refactoring this and they don't need this button anymore, but they then don't go back and actually remove the class. So that class is just sitting there forever until someone remembers to purge it from the code base, which if you're work anywhere like the places that I've worked, no one is remembering to do this. There's so much unused CSS. And also, I mean, not even just that, but if you have, you know, say like two different buttons like here and right here, and they're both using two rem or whatever, these are having to ship multiple classes to kind of achieve the same thing. Whereas when you're reusing the same classes in different spots, so you have, you know, whatever one button right here, and that has, you know, that, that first class name or whatever. So button or whatever, pretend I'll just rename them, but you have your two different class names that each are shipping their own CSS. Well, instead with tailwind, you're just shipping the same class names, right? So it's like, say it's P four for each of them then you're only shipping one class instead of shipping, shipping two separate classes. So even if you are kind of minimizing your CSS, you're still only shipping one class as opposed to potentially a bajillion classes for any given style. Tailwind also purges all the extra CSS. So you're gonna notice like there's a million classes. You're like, wouldn't that just be a ridiculous amount of CSS? Well, no, because it's only gonna end up actually shipping whatever CSS you have included in your file. It's not actually gonna ship a ridiculous amount of code. The other thing that's nice, uh, and this kind of circles back to what I'm doing right here, is you don't have to think about class names anymore. Um, you know, when you're working on something yourself, maybe this isn't super hard. You're just doing like BTN and then, you know, BTN small and then BTN large or whatever. And you can give these pretty semantic names, but the problem comes whenever you're working uh, with multiple people on like a big project and BTN is already taken and every variation of that. So at least what I end up seeing happen super often is like, you know, BTN dash, you know, team name dash primary or whatever. And they just, these just get ridiculous. And you have like these, these class names that don't really end up even meaning anything. Um, so it's kind of hard to figure out what stuff's doing and no one's really following any conventions. Of course you can try and follow conventions with these, but when you have a bunch of people on the team and you're moving really quickly, no one's particularly following conventions and it just gets ridiculous. You'll have all of these different class names that mean like absolutely nothing. So you're not gonna have that anymore, which is also really nice. The other useful thing is you're always gonna know where your CSS is coming from. So with something like this, uh, you know, maybe you've written your, you know, you can just do a code search or whatever and try and find this class name and you would find this here, but maybe uh, let's say it's just like BTN or something like that. So this is like your, your company or your project's button class. Um, but then somebody else somewhere has said, maybe this, this wrapping class has like, you know, my wrapper or something. And inside of that wrapper somewhere else, someone has said, you know, my wrapper. And then inside of that, they said dot BTN. And then they've given that a padding. Sorry, I'm in normal CSS, not SCSS. Um, but they've said, you know, okay, give that button a padding if it's inside of this wrapper of whatever it is. And that gets really, really confusing because now you have to not only figure out this, you have to figure out the entire hierarchy of all of this code and then try and go figure out what the CSS is that's overriding the style that you wanna change. And that's also super aggravating. So that's another thing you're not gonna to have to deal with anymore. Now you might be also thinking like I definitely did myself when I first started using Tailwind is like, why is this actually any better than inline styles? So, you know, why don't I just go style equals whatever and then write all of my styles here. And the main answer for me is you can't with inline styles do a lot of the same things that you can do with Tailwind. So for instance, um, let's see, like hover states or something. So like on my button, I could do class name and I could say whenever I hover this, I want to make the background, you know, this color. And whenever it's active, so like whenever someone's clicking on this button, I wanna make the background black or something. And these are things you can't do with inline styles. You can even do things like what I'm actually doing, I think somewhere in this button, um, you can mark different elements as groups and then style based on those groups. So right here, I've named this a group. And then somewhere in here, let's see group dash. I'm saying whenever this group is hovered, so anywhere on this entire group, I wanna increase the opacity of this element to 100%. And that is another thing that you cannot do with inline styles. And finally, for just kind of like the why, is just that this works unbelievably well with component framework. So with like React or with Svelte or whatever you might be using. Um, and the tooling around that as well is super good. So here, let me find this uh, component really quick. So here's an example. Um, it, obviously, if you're using something like React, you know, you're gonna have, you're probably gonna make a component for button that's used in multiple different places. You're probably not gonna try and rewrite the same button classes over and over again. Tailwind is, you know, uh, just a natural kind of add on to something like that. So if you're getting these really big class names for stuff that you're reusing all the time, obviously you're gonna to wanna to turn those into components. Um, and the tooling around that again is really, really nice. So what I'm using right here is called 
uh, class variance authority. Class variance authority is essentially a tool. I'm not going to do a full tutorial on this right now, um, but a tool for defining variance for like design system type components for something like a button or an input. So for instance, I have this button here for one of my projects and this button takes in a number of different possible variants. So for instance, I can have size, actually it's only taking in one here, but I could also have like, uh, you know, type and maybe that's, you know, ghost is one. And then that has like a number of different classes for giving it, you know, a, an opaque background and then primary or something like that. And that has its own classes. And this will automatically append all of these different class names for you. Point just being tailwind natural kind of add on to a component based library, at least in, in my opinion. Now to move on kind of a little bit from the why into a couple of the more practical things that I have, you know, maybe you're not going to see immediately whenever you start just playing with tailwind that makes it better. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is theming. Actually, the last video I did on this channel was on how to do theming, like allowing people to have many different themes. So check that out. I'll have a link in the description. Beyond that, just being able to define your themes. So Tailwind in general is going to come with pretty good defaults for like, you know, colors and spacing and everything. So if I did something like BG dash, you're going to see all of the different colors that this comes with. Obviously, these are not semantic. These don't really mean anything specifically to you. Uh, maybe your brand color, you just want to use their violet color and that's totally fine, but it's really easy to actually define all of these defaults yourself. So you are going to have a Tailwind config file whenever you're using Tailwind. It's going to look something like this. And inside of your theme, you can actually extend whatever you want to add any of your own colors. So I could go inside of extend. You can actually do this outside of here and just override everything if you wanted to, I believe. But I can come inside of extend and I can say colors. And then inside of colors, I can name, you know, primary or something like that, which makes a little bit more sense to me, primary. And maybe primary is whatever, you know, pretend it's just white for this case. And this is all automatically going to make the utility classes that you need for this. So I could do like something BG dash primary. Oops. And it's actually going to autocomplete with that color. Obviously I'm just using white here and I'm using uh, background somewhere else. So it's giving me these little squigglies, but point being the theming support for this is really good. One thing that I will call out really quick um, is if you're planning, if you don't really know a lot about what you're doing with design, kind of the power, uh, part of the power, like I said earlier with Tailwind is just all these awesome defaults that it's gonna come with. So I would avoid personally overriding something like spacing unless you actually know what you're doing, just so you don't kind of end up with odd results. Um, obviously, if you do know what you're doing, you can override all of those things, but uh, yeah, just my fair warning. I've tried to do that before and had bad results. So anyways, on from that to kind of some of the plugins and packages that I find useful to help build Tailwind better. The first one that I'm going to talk about is got to remember where this is included. I think this would just be in my prettier RC. Yeah. So you can add this prettier plugin Tailwind CSS. Um, and this is actually supported from Tailwind, I believe. So yeah, this is by Tailwind Labs. And one of the things that gets a little bit unruly whenever you're writing Tailwind CSS and you have these really long lines of code. So like, I guess this is a really good example. Like I have these really, really long lines of class names is not having any kind of like natural order to where the class names go. And all that this prettier plugin is going to do is make sure that everything goes in a place that makes sense. So you'll see if I add like text dash slate 500 or something and okay, well I have two of these. Uh, but anyway, so if I added, say, text slate 500, then I click save, it's going to move that and it's going to sort all of these into an order that actually makes sense. Obviously, I'm going to delete that extra one there. But using something like this is going to make it make a little bit more sense, where if you're looking for, you know, all of your paddings, all of them are going to be kind of grouped together as opposed to having, you know, padding, one of your, your padding on the x-axis right here and your padding on the y-axis way over here. And then you're just kind of scrolling back and forth and trying to look for everything. So definitely add that. But beyond that, and one other thing that I think a lot of people don't play with very often is plugins. And this is like a feature that's also in your Tailwind config. Um, there's a whole bunch of like these that also come from Tailwind Labs. But you can extend and like add in your own utility classes um, and even groups of utility classes using these plugin things here. One that you may have heard of before is Daisy UI. So if you wanted something a little closer to like a bootstrap or something like that, that's what Daisy UI is. And this is just a Tailwind plugin. So if I go to see components, you'll, this is probably gonna look more like a normal design system to you. You know, I can look at accordions or something and they have just taken and built on top of Tailwind their own kind of library. And all of this looks a little bit more similar to 
a normal CSS uh, library. So, you know, they have like collapse as a class. They're still using, you know, like their normal kind of tailwind in some places, but then collapse title or maybe buttons a better example. So if I go to button and then click JSX here, they'll just have a class for button and then different variations of buttons. Um, and there's a couple of these, so you can look into that as well. There's different libraries that are built on top of this that can just be installed as a plugin and then extended using all of the other Tailwind stuff. But beyond just these, there's also a whole bunch of different plugins. So if I type in Tailwind CSS plugins and go to the Tailwind CSS documentation, they're going to talk about uh, how to actually add your own, which is something that I've kind of done over here. I've written a little basic one for letting me add background grids, but there is also a bunch of useful ones that are kind of official. So like these typography ones, these form ones, uh, adding aspect ratio support. That's actually basic now. And same with container queries. These are supported by Tailwind, like the company behind Tailwind. And some of these are fantastic. So for instance, this typography one is, is super great. It'll give you this prose class. And this is really good if you have like data coming from a CMS or something for a blog, this is automatically going to give you really, really great defaults for all of your different elements. So it'll say, okay, H1s, we're just going to style all of those, or uh, paragraph tags will style all of those, you know, quotes will style all, style all of those. And you don't have to worry about that at all. Obviously, you can adjust it, and there's different kind of variants of that, but worth looking into. Um, there you can get some real superpowers out of these plugins that you're not going to get by default by just the normal Tailwind CSS library. There's also a million of them that, you know, I'm sure I haven't even looked about or looked into. Now, finally, the last thing that I wanted to talk about super quick is for some cases, you actually may want to have these semantic names. So, you know, maybe you're a company and you do want people to be able to just write in BTN instead of, instead of importing, you know, a, a component or something like that. And you can define classes like by applying Tailwind CSS classes to one single class. So hopefully that makes some sense. Let me go back. I actually had this in here just a moment ago. Yeah, so here we go. The, the syntax for that will look something like this. Um, so Tailwind has these things called directives, if I find this. Yeah, so you can actually find the full documentation for all of the different functions and directives that come with Tailwind CSS. Um, but the high level here is just that if you want to actually use Tailwind CSS to create your own kind of design library, you can use these apply directives that look something like this. This is gonna to have to be in the same file as where you're actually instantiating um, or wherever you're importing these different Tailwind um, functions and directives. And then you can kind of layer these into these different buckets. So if you look over here, it's gonna say valid layers are base components and utilities. This is my components bucket. And I'm just saying I want a, to, a new class called button primary, which applies all of these different classes. So now whenever I go back into my code somewhere, I can, instead of having to write all of that code over again, like I was saying a moment ago, I can just go button. And then if you really want to, you can do something like class name equals button primary. And this is automatically going to apply all of those different styles for you. Taking one step back into normal CSS land, you can't get all the way away from CSS at all times. Um, I try to avoid this, like you'll see in this project, I'm not doing this anywhere myself. Um, but it can be useful in a lot of different scenarios. Anyways, that's going to be it for this one. Um, hopefully my rambling was any level of helpful to those of you guys who are getting into Tailwind or absolutely hate Tailwind, or maybe this just made everyone hate it more. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go now. Goodbye.